All right, guys, we are here at Lake Murray. I have Brad with me from Berkeley, and I'm excited. I'm excited because we're at a blueback herring lake that anytime you say that name, Brad, it's like, <gasps> you get this, oh my gosh, we're at a blueback herring, and it, it causes confusion, it causes chaos, but if you do the right thing, and you make the right moves it can be good and today our goal is i want to talk to you a little bit about calling up bass at a blue herring lake and it's uh it's a technique that they use basically what are the three lakes that are kind of course hill Lanier, murray yes those four lakes are known for having blueback herring in them and they you know can get frustrated so these fish today that we're targeting if you're new to the channel these fish are when we say schooling they're going to be roaming like they could be 20 yards to our left 20 yards to our right and we just don't know where they're at but it's a technique called calling them up and if you hear that so we're going to call them up we're going to teach you how long you should stay that's a big question that everybody always has how how long should you stay on a, a point or a bar or a hump I want to show you in the maps today what we're looking for, what we're doing. So, guys, stay tuned. Hopefully, we're the wind is blowing hard, so I know when we get out here on the water, it's going to be, it might be some tough audio. We're going to try to talk loud, so don't chime out, and hopefully, we're going to get you a lot of good topwater action. Oh, there they are. As soon as you get bit, it's about over. Yeah. I mean, normally you'd be like, all right, we caught two, we saw all these fish, and we're like, we need to stay right here. But technically, it's like, hey, time to go. I think you can let them sit for a good 20, 30, and they'll gang back up in the spot they're in, and you can come back and they'll, they'll reignite. So here we go, guys. Just landed a double, not a minute later, we're leaving. And it, I know it sounds weird, but you, you got to do it. You got to do it. All right, so a tip that you can do. So say if you do are fishing a team tournament, one thing that you can do is if you kind of know where they're at, they might, they, the fish might be to the right, to the left, and you pull up as, as, a, a, as a boat and you both fire out there. Well, say he got a bite, Brad got the bite, and I'm over here to the left, and I have to reel back in. So what we're gonna do this time is, I'm gonna, we're gonna, Brad's gonna cast the cane walker over there, and I'm gonna wait until he gets a bite. And the second he gets a bite, I know that I can get right back in them, because it's gonna be the group of them, and see if we can't double up. We're gonna give it a try, but this is something that you could do if you actually know where they're at. So call them up, Brad. Call them up. I'm cocked and loaded. I'm cocked and loaded. I see. There they are, huh? Come in. God bless America. I hope you see that right there. They are getting it on. All right, let's do it at the same time. You ready? Hold on. Uh, quite. There they are, right over there. You look right beside the buoy, guys. You ready? I beat you to it. I do. I <laughs> Behind the buoy, is hiding from me. They is there. They is there. Oh, <laughs> oh he got off. I think. Darn it. 
My man's knee <laughs> held me up on it. I would have caught that sucker. Damn, he stole my rod and reel. <laughs> Bait. Oh, good uh -huh. one. Uh-huh, we got fired up. Oh, oh that was oh. so awesome. <laughs> he pushed it like, oh, oh gosh. Oh, got him. Got him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get three. This is what we're talking about, guys. Like, I know you guys know it. Anytime you get them, but especially with Aaron, you have to be quick and fast. Man, that's a nice one, dude. You have to capitalize very quick on it, don't you, bro? Yeah, it's got to be in there. We got lucky with the clouds and wind today, but when it's sunny, when the sun's out and it's calm, they're hard to catch. You gotta be right on top of them. That's a good one. Yeah. Cane sure. walker. So, Brad, we just pulled up here and immediately we catch two bass double up. And then we've been here for what, another 10 minutes and haven't had a, another bite. Is this when you need to move or like what, what's going on? Yeah, it seems like as soon as you pull up on a spot, they just bite like that. And I guess they're up there feeding on herring and they get accustomed to the boat being around or they move. Herring moves so much. They'll be here one day and gone the next in an hour or a minute. Shoot, minutes? Yeah, like... they could be over there now and not feeding, just waiting on the herring school to come back over the top of them. All right, guys. Here's, I want to explain to you a little bit on this map of kind of what we're doing. I, I just picked a, a random section right here, but if I was just at this lake, didn't know nothing about it and wanted to try to figure out this heron bite, basically, let's just say for instance, see this shallow, this is like a shallow bar right here. You can see this shallow bar with uh, deep water all the way around it. Basically, what, what you've been hearing is saying they like to set up like right here on like say if I was to approach it coming this way They like to sit, sit up on this shallow end with deep water close by and as you can see today Wind is like been a big factor and it's say for instance here on this point same thing It's kind of a, a, a no-brainer what we're doing and when I say a no-brainer you got this point this would be another one and and you would approach it in a in a manner because you never know where they're at you never know so say if i was to pull up on this point i'm going to come and just center punch it just go straight down the center and i'm going to be casting to the left to the right to the left to the right to the left to the right you know you're just kind of fan casting you never know where they're going to be set up you've heard us talk about today you know here here would be another one you know like just within this creek and here's another one like you see this little skinny finger that comes out here then you got this bar like basically within probably you know in this this whole arm you could come in here and go like this point this point this point this point like you could check this whole arm out in probably 30 to 45 minutes so if they're biting and, and you got the right conditions you always need to keep moving keep moving around uh, and just you know sometimes they're going to be back up into the creeks you know it could be like this is like a creek arm and of course you got the main lake out here if you're not getting bit in the creek arm you know start running some of these points out to the main lake you know we're kind of in the first part of june right now so a lot of these fish aren't you know they've been done spawning for a little bit you got leftover fry garters but they're kind of on their way out you know maybe out here to the main lake so you know don't let yourself get stubborn and just keep going in the back you know make sure you check the creeks make sure you check the main lake so what we're going to do now is we're just we're going to go back okay you guys have seen us catch quite a few fish we know where what we know where about five schools are at so we're going to go back to where some of these schools are at and they've probably repositioned themselves and we're going to let you guys watch what happens after they've rested after we've already caught them we're going to go back and see if they're ready to bite because we've already explained that when you are 
catching them. You know, it, pretty much once you catch th two or three, whatever you can get, and you bust that school up. You've heard that term many a times in bass fishing. Bust that school up. Once you bust them up, it's like you got to let them reposition. So we're gonna actually go back and see if we can get these fish fired back up again after they're settled down. So, and I like to watch oh, this. Where, where? Right oh, oh God! Yeah, nice move, man. All right, guys. So we just got pulled up on the, the spot we, we told y'all about letting them uh, rest, and we just dropped the trolling motor, and there they are. They're already set up. Bite. Oh, I'm right behind you. Take this Revo rocket and catch up with you. Get in front of you so I can, I can get them. Did you see the hair? Yes. I'm gonna. They're here, guys. And they're set up and ready. But just as quick as we saw them right there, they could be like, you know, 30 yards. <laughs> just like I said. Like, oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Watch this. It's over. Oh, dude, I hate it when it happens. <laughs> Yet. No, I cannot believe he ain't hit it. Golly, we should have just smoked one right there. You got to be right on top of him. And just, oh, he's, oh, 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 got him, got him. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, that's a big oh, one. That is a big one. I missed mine. 45 minute rest and we're back on again. We got a cap right now. Got it. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh. Golly, I done missed two. Oh, he came up. That's all right. He in the boat. <laughs> so he just caught a, that really nice large mouth and that's what i was telling you guys is that when you catch them it literally draws the whole school to them and as soon as i got to a boat like a four pounder was trying to eat it look how he's only got one eye show the camera that so you must have been on the right <laughs> side of him what right? well, it's that cane walker making all that noise that's right <laughs> All right, guys, we just tucked in here out of the wind, and I want to explain to you and talk a little bit about the baits we're using and why you saw us working them that way. Uh, you saw us repeat back on some spots. We talked about uh, the fish ganging back up, but when we say calling up, okay, I, I want to talk a little bit about what calling up means. These bass are just kind of roaming on these flats, eating on these herring or whatever basically opportunity comes across. And one of the biggest things that you're going to want in a bait is something that's loud because they could be 10 yards to the left, 10 yards to the right of your bait. And they're up there basically, Brad, they want to eat. I yeah. mean, they they got one point they're up there to eat so sometimes you hear talking about silent baits and some baits you want rattles in it heron bite you definitely want uh, uh something that's got a lot of rattles so we're using a cane walker this is made by berkeley you can find the link below look in the description uh, below but there's a couple colors when it's sunny outside or cloudy you can never go wrong with chrome it's kind of like doesn't matter chrome looks like a fish no matter where it's at chrome is always good on heron lakes and you saw me catch some on a wider the contrast is basically a white and black looking bottom this actually got a gold hue to the bottom of it so 
uh cane walker made by berkeley and we broke out the old school yeah. brad the magic swimmer the magic swimmer made by sabil and it's it's kind of cool what what year was it that i think it was 07 08 when i think Kenyon hill went on it at clark's hill and then davy height and all those guys called him out here on it and it's just been a, a standard on everybody on in the herring lakes from Hartwood here to Lanier and if you're even if you're a saltwater fisherman yeah, yeah if you go in, inshore redfish trout it's really good for that bait as well we have all we have a huge size I think it's a 195 all the way to a 110 so I'm gonna be honest I haven't thrown it since 2007 the crave hit there heron hadn't got as popular in all these lakes back then this was one of the first lakes yep. that it got it, that the blueback heron actually got popular in so so bill it's just a three jointed swim bait it looks fabulous in the water if you haven't seen that check the description below i'll put a link to where you can buy these at below and brad I must say I enjoyed it, but people love this outro. So we get to see Brad get jiggy with it. And guys, I say it all the time, but I appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, and commenting. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go back, surf, look around at some of the older videos I got uh, if you're new to the channel. So Brad, basically it's the wave. You got to do the wave and you can pop, you can Put your leg motion into it. I don't, it doesn't matter, but guys, we are about to get the outro out of here.